Today I'm going to talk about psychoacoustics, which is a real uh, passion of mine. Well, here this is an analysis by the Leesman Index. They uh, asked over 100,000 people what they thought of their office. 100,000 people in 50 countries. And you can see that noise is the second biggest cause of dissatisfaction. Noise is the biggest cause of lack of productivity in the office. But how much does it affect productivity? How much does noise affect productivity? Well, a few years ago, um, I ran an analysis of over 200 research papers where they quantified the impact of different environmental factors on, on productivity. Whilst acoustics is 0.2 to 1.7% impact on productivity when you consider all those studies, and you might think, well, that's not much, really, 1.7%, why are we bothering? But the point is that we know that just a 5% increase in productivity can actually pay completely for your property costs. But did you know, again, when we looked at the literature, and this was some work done with uh, Ekafan, myself and Paige Hodson, when we looked at the literature, the common conclusion was that sound level only accounted for about 25% of the variance in the response to noise. So there's 75% of other stuff happening that we're not even looking at. And, they were, and again, the studies suggest that 50% are psychological factors. And that's where psychoacoustics comes in. My short definition is this. It's simply how people perceive, interpret, and react to sound. I want to talk now about the personality types. I've already men mentioned personality as being one of the key factors. And I'm only going to talk about two of those today, introversion and extroversion. A natural level of arousal, state of arousal. If it's low, you're going to feel lethargic, a bit drowsy. And as a consequence, you're not going to perform well. And if your level of arousal is too high, you're going to be stressed out. And again, your performance is going to degrade because you're just not coping. If you're an extrovert, you have a natural low level of arousal. So you're constantly seeking stimulation. Um, which means in noisy, buzzy, stimulating environments, you thrive, you love it. Whereas a poor old introvert, they have already have a natural high state of arousal. So if you put those in noisy, stimulating environments, they're going to suffer. And I've tried to summarise this, or Paige and I tried to summarise this in a diagram. What it comes down to is if, for example, you're an introvert, low level of arousal, doing complex tasks, sorry, high level of arousal, introvert, doing complex tasks, you're going to find noisy stimulations both distracting, disturbing, and affect your performance. At the other end of the scale, if you're an extrovert, so you're seeking stimulation, and you're doing a boring, simple task, you're going to find quiet environments not, not good for your performance. Okay, did slide. But what it means is that we've got to, we have to, understand the makeup of people in the office in order to create the right acoustic environments for them. I'm trying to bring all this together into a model where basically, um, and, we're, and we're developing a tool, and um, the first thing we do is we do that evaluation. So we do all the physical or the acoustic evaluations. We look at the activities of people doing, where they do them, how long they're doing them for. We do personality profiling across the whole group. And um, we, we also look, look at um, background variables, we, individual factors. We found things like age have a big impact on uh, noise perception. And what that means is that you can then start to think about what work settings do I need, where should they be, how should they be laid out, and should I think about my teams in terms of adjacencies, how they work together, or should I think about teams in terms of what are a high mix of introverts like a finance group versus what's a high mix of extroverts like a sales group, and start to think about how I organise those. And then we train people in how to behave. It sounds a bit condescending, but we train people in how to behave in an open plan environment and how to curb their enthusiasm. And uh, that allows us uh, to bring in a source of uh, expertise, uh, acousticians, designers and architects to look at the layout, the zoning, um, and uh, obviously behavioural psychologists uh, to, to look at how we uh, help people change their behaviour. <laughs>